What is going on guys? Nick here, back with another video. I have long been on the bandwagon that GameStop is a dead company walking, ready to join Sears and JCPenney in the retail graveyard. But over the past couple of months, and especially yesterday, it's suddenly come back to life. And I thought I would take an emergency look at GameStop to decide if this is something serious going on that we need to get immediately on the trend, or is this a pump and dump or a short squeeze and we need to avoid becoming bag holders. So GameStop has been on decline since October of 2015 at a final peak of $46 per share. Since then, it slid down to a low of $2.57 this year before all of a sudden this August, they came back to life and recently shot up all the way back to $32 per share. So the first big question is why? Well, a lot of the theories that you'll see right away is, is this a short squeeze? Well, first let me explain what a short squeeze is. So shorting a stock is when somebody borrows shares that they then immediately sell in the hopes that the price will go down and then they'll be able to buy back the shares and return them to the lender while pocketing the difference. A short squeeze occurs when there's a loss of faith that the price will fall and interest in shorting the stock drops dramatically. Short sellers will cut their losses and buy up shares, which creates extra demand for the stock. Now, if you know the first rule of economics when demand goes through the roof and supply is relatively the same the price ends up shooting up this is what results in a short squeeze so is this just a short squeeze situation and if so why did those betting against GameStop decide to run away well on December 31st of 2020 GameStop had 71 million shares sold short on January 13th the same day I'm making this video and the same day the stock price went up 57% there was hundred and forty three million shares traded so I can't certainly rule out a short squeeze especially when we've seen such a huge run-up in one day but I couldn't imagine that anyone holding a short position currently feels very good about the huge jump that we've seen now it's not exactly clear if short interest fell yet or if so by how much but an analyst with s3 partners which specializes in analyzing data on short selling said that he doesn't believe that GameStop's price surge was the result of a short squeeze alone he points to two main factors that seem a lot more likely to be the cause. The first reason for the big run-up is stronger holiday sales, which since announced, really seemed to start up the optimism machine. On Monday, January 11th, GameStop posted their holiday sales results. They showed 4.8% comparable sales increase and a 309% year-over-year increase in online sales. Although total sales did fall 3.1% due to store closures and COVID-19 disruptions. Strong sales were driven by high demand for the new PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. It seems to make sense that a lot of customers, likely a lot of parents, out buying new consoles for the holidays would pick up a couple games and accessories to go with the new consoles. The second and I think more important reason is that GameStop announced a deal with RC Ventures LLC that results in three members from the pet online supply retailer Chewy.com joining GameStop's board. The three members are Ryan Cohen, the founder of Chewy.com, Alan Atoll, the COO, and Jim Grube, the former CFO. These three new board members hope to create a new direction for GameStop and find a way for them to exist when so many game sales are transitioning to digital direct purchases, cutting out the retailer and middleman in video game sales. Chewy.com started off selling pet food online in 2011, but was able to build up sales reaching $2 billion in 2017 when they eventually sold the business to PetSmart for $3.3 billion. Cohen said the reason for Chewy's success was providing an online service that Amazon wasn't by understanding the emotional connection people have with their pets. They provided real customer service that would help find products people needed. Cohen explained that you can call us if you want to know what the best grain-free foods are, what the best weight loss foods are, or if your dog has some kind of allergy or skin issue. You can call 24-7 and somebody will pick up the phone within a few seconds, and we know every product that we sell really well. All three of the newly appointed board members have a lot of experience in e-commerce, online marketing, finance, and strategic planning. This seems to be what GameStop desperately needs. The days of driving out to the store to buy a physical disc to put in your system seems to be on its way out, especially when PlayStation and Xbox are both releasing cheaper digital only models, meaning that there's nowhere to insert a disc into the console and the only way to get the game is a digital download. The goal is to turn GameStop into a technology company instead of a video game retailer. Cohen sees the company like a lot of us, a long-term decline due to its apparent unwillingness to pivot with urgency and growth with gamers. He also said they need to take practical steps to cut its excessive real estate costs and to hire the right talent to begin building a powerful e-commerce platform that provides competitive pricing, board gaming selection, fast shipping, and a truly high-touch experience that excites and delights customers. 
Now it's not exactly clear what the specific plans are to drive a new customer centric approach to GameStop, but I think Cohen's criticism towards GameStop's previous reluctance to fully go after online sales is fair. However, I don't know exactly what they'll be able to do to drive digital sales. Chewy and GameStop seem like two very different online businesses with very different customers. There's already a lot of reputable review websites and YouTube channels that already talk in depth about new games, so I don't know how much customer recommendation will help. Maybe they could create some kind of subscription service where they can give you discounts if you buy a new game every month. If you guys have any ideas for what they could do, comment them below. I'd be really interested to hear what you guys think. So let's take a look at the finances so far. So right now we can see just how flat revenue growth has been and then the serious decline since 2018. Even when the business was profitable, notice how low the margins are. Low margins are very typical in retail businesses. So if we look at the revenue compared to their operational expenses, we can see why this is. Most of the revenue is eaten up by the cost of revenue, which again is normal in retail, but this highlights the struggle they're going to face in this turnaround because they have such less of a margin to work with. Selling general and administrative expenses eat up the rest of the profit, and this has left them in negative territory for the past few years. They've also taken some goodwill impairments, and if you don't know what that is, it's when a company claims the value of an asset on their balance sheet, but then that asset loses value. They have to claim it as a loss. If we go into the analyst forecast to see what the current projected future of the business looks like, we can see that analysts see a slight boost to the revenue this year, and that path is expected to continue until the end of 2021. They're still forecasting a $2 per share loss when you take into account the fourth quarter of 2020. And by the end of this year, 2021, they're expecting to lose 17 cents per share. GameStop's balance sheet shows $2.6 billion in assets to $2.2 billion in liabilities. This gives us $332 million in equity. They reported $400 and 60 million in debt, so debt to equity isn't quite as bad as I expected at 1.38. They have 446 million in cash, so all things being considered, this really isn't as bad as I thought. Okay, so let's take a look at the valuation and figure out how things are looking. But before I do that, if you could take a second to scroll down and hit the thumbs up button, I would really appreciate it. It helps out the channel and the video a whole lot. So we have to use a price to sales ratio since they currently aren't profitable. Historically, they've had a 4% profit margin when they were profitable, so I'll use that number. For growth, I honestly had no idea if these board members are really gonna make an impact. I'm not ruling it out, but right now I'm a little skeptical on how this turnaround plan is going to work since we haven't seen much of a plan yet. I'll use a growth rate of minus 3% to 5%. This comes out to a price to sales number of 0.262 and 0.585. The current trailing revenue is $5.1 billion, so this gives us a valuation between $1.3 billion and $2.1 billion, or $19 to $43 per share. 2021 is forecasted to earn $5.6 billion, so this brings the valuation up to $4.4 billion to $3.2 billion, which is $19 to $44 per share. Now, this is a pretty vague valuation, and when you think about the uncertainty of how this business is going to go, it kind of makes sense. If revenue does continue to decline, these valuations really won't mean much. The current basis for their entire value is going to revolve around if they're able to execute a plan to turn their business around. And I'm just not fully certain on what that will be or what they really can do. Now this is a look at the long-term valuation and with all of the volume and attention GameStop is getting right now, the price could really go in any direction. But I expect the news of the new board members will support the stock price for now until we start to see the plans and eventually the results of their new direction start to come into place. Now it's always helpful to hear what others think, especially as news breaks. So along with new ideas you guys have for the new direction, let me know what you think about what the future outlook of this business looks like. All right, well that's all I have. If you enjoy this kind of content, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, thanks for watching.